You know, in the interview with Adam, right? Like you were bigging him up a lot for having his own podcast and being able to do things his own way on his own time. Did that eventually lead to like wh why you did like the the mic meetings and stuff? Because you were trying to to see if that would work for you. I don't know. I for me, I love having the connections. Like to, if I could do like what what we're doing right now every day, I think there's a lot of value in genuine conversation, and I don't think there's a lot of platforms that support it. You know, let's be honest, bro. You're gonna put this up as radio host, hip hop Mike tells his story. And you're not going to get a shit ton of clicks, but you could put mm -hmm. up a video like Sexy Red pops her ass for five minutes straight and you're going to get a million views. So it's right. like Mike meetings was more like, I don't need the money and I'm able to have the conversations and I know what to do as far as like how to make it official, like honest, like to a certain standard. So it's like, that's why I did it because it is a passion and it's like a joy. It's like, if you love, you know, riding bikes you gonna ride bikes forever you know what i mean it's like that's your thing so you know i wanted to do mic meetings more so because i wanted to be able to have these conversations without anybody telling me how to speak what to say what needed to be played how long they needed to be and like i really respect like the joe rogans of the world for that that they they're able to just talk shit and it and it helps people internationally and it's not about anything other than just genuine connection yeah but when you got the bread right there ain't no pressure to do things certain way, though, you know? Nah. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, though. Like, see, like, I totally understand. It was never about the bread. It was never about the bread, bro. I wasted so much bread. I spent probably $15,000 doing mic meetings between getting equipment, building the studio, renting the apartment that I rented, everything. And I didn't make any money off of it. But I, like, I have great content. I had great conversations. And that 15 racks is worth every single person that came through the crib and that spent some time with me, you know? I would have paid double for their time. But what I'm saying, though, is, like, were you, like, pressed for money during that time? Like, were you struggling financially? Not mic meetings. Nah, mic meetings, I was rich as fuck. See, but that's I, what I'm honestly, saying, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, but if you press for money, there's a lot more pressure to, like, damn, do I got to, you know, do the the wave of the internet, how it's, like, more, like, clickbait is more drama, is more to, to get the yeah, views, nah. to get the money, you know what I'm saying? Because, like... Like what you're saying, right? You said that when you're having these meaningful conversations like you and I are having, it's not going to get a lot of views, right? But it's the more nah. meaningful thing to your soul because you connected with a person, right? That's why like when I make content, I have the, to, you know, I'm capturing somebody's story from the very beginning because that's what's most important to me. It's like being able to present somebody in the best light. Like the drama, those clips, I already know that's what's going to sell the interview, right? That's what's going to keep the lights mm -hmm. on. But to me, that's not what's really most important. Like I got to yeah. I gotta play the game a little bit because, you know what I'm saying? I got to still make some bread. But to me, that's not the most important thing. But it's hard because you see how the Internet is and, and with social media and all the bullshit and like what people value. And it's hard to, yeah. you know, kind of sometimes to step away from it. I mean, for me, honestly, bro, it was like, even with playing the game, I never did it, bro. I was like, I'll work at the radio station and do some haircuts to pay my bills. Like, I'm not playing that game. Like, I really was never. I never took a penny. I never hosted a strip club, nothing. I didn't, I didn't do shit, honestly, besides just go to the station, play the artists I fucked with. You know, I would, I would book on Tuesdays, Mondays, Tuesdays, like five, six interviews back to back. And I would have, like, on the same night, like, Neek Bucks, Koyla Ray, Tylee Yahweh. Like, they would pull up back to back to back. And I would do interviews and, like, fight with the radio station to try to get them to post them. And, like, a lot of shit didn't get posted. Wow. I was doing shit that, like, wasn't getting me even nothing just to do it because I love to do it. And it's crazy that I saw, like, the fact that I just love to do it was being effective online. But, like, I never paid for, like, a marketing company. I never did like articles and maybe that's to my demise. Like I have a lot of friends that they pay publicists and do stuff and they do very well in that industry. But me, it was like, I'm going to do this a hundred percent genuine and organic period. One, because I can't afford to do it the other way. And two, because even if I could afford to do it that way, I, I like wouldn't do it. Like I'd put that money towards buying property like my cousins or my uncles or whatever had and like all that shit. So I don't know, man, it's to each his own, but it, it just, it wasn't sitting right with me at a point where I'm like, I'm doing all this work and getting nothing for it. And 
it's just making my situation around the people I respect worse. Yeah, because, you know, I, I was trying to find more of your interviews, right? Like ones where you're interviewing people. I couldn't really they find any. They wouldn't post shit, bro. They wouldn't post shit. And it's like, and I could show you, bro. Honestly, fuck this guy. There was a guy, I think his name, Mike Fox, was it? I think his name was Mike Fox, bro. They hired this guy, Mike Fox, to fucking run the digital department. Let me show you something, bro. April 2019, right? Hey, Mike, shot an interview a few weeks ago. I'm still waiting on the edit, just checking in, right? Look, second email, following up again, right? So this, the first email was 419. Second email is May 1st. The third email, May 7th. Coil Array is ready, right? They sent me the Coil Array email. And I said, this is, we went back and forth, right? This is the baby interview. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count exactly how many. Hold up. I want to I wanna make sure I get this right. I asked Mike Fox about this DaBaby interview. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times. When are we posting DaBaby interview? I did an interview with DaBaby for 45 minutes, two weeks after he had that whole shooting at Walmart. Wow. And he told me the whole story. He's like, I was there with my baby moms. We was in the um in the baby aisle. I seen this dude come around. He told me the whole story two weeks after this shit happened. He didn't even drop baby on baby yet. He came in, he was wearing North Face. No jewelry, had no money, nothing. And I'm asking Mike to post this fucking interview 10 times over the course of two, three months. It never went up. And I'm just like, is there an agenda to like not let my shit? I'm, I'm taping it myself. I'm recording the audio. I'm editing it. I'm literally handing you guys an interview. You All you have to do is hit post, and it never went up. And I think it's because the interviews that did go up, at, at, when I first started, they sent cameras, and they did all of it, and they went up, and I went viral. And I think after that, it, it just it never went up. 